going to run through these to get you um, to understand what they're looking for and what it is that they're trying to regulate. So in most states, they're going to uh, regulate which items that you can sell. Why would they do that? Because they're trying to protect the consumer and they're trying to regulate out the high risk items. And just a really quick example of that would be cheesecakes, right? Cheesecakes have to be refrigerated. They go bad a lot quicker than a baked cake would, et cetera. So high dairy, um, high mold producing products, that's a lot of what's on the list of um, items that you can't sell. They're going to be regulating which ingredients are restricted. In some states, they don't allow dairy and buttercream, and some don't even allow butter. <laughs> okay, so like some states are super specific about these ingredients. Some states aren't. You might be in a state that has barely any cottage laws. They say do whatever. You might be in a state that's really nitpicky. So again, I'm just doing the, um, going over the main categories, and you can check for yourself what, where exactly are you sitting. They are going to be looking at where you can sell your items. So a lot of times selling directly in person, that's pretty much okay, cottage law wide. Um, they might say you can't sell in another state. They might say that you can't sell online. They might say X, Y, Z. Um, so selling in person in farmer's markets are usually the two that are often listed. They try to regulate how much you can make as a home business, which I have feelings about this, honestly, but um, basically there's a cap on income. I'm not really sure how they enforce this or how this really goes down, but the states will say, hey, you can't make more than $50,000 a year in your business, X, Y, Z. So check on that. They'll be looking at, um, and this is an important one, what's your home like? So everyone has a different house set up. Everyone has a different family situation. Um, there are going to be restrict restrictions that are based on how the kitchen is built. Some states say there has to be a door in between where you're producing the product and the rest of your home. And a lot of people don't have a door to their kitchen. So that could be a problem. Um, some states say there can't be any children in the house. <clears throat> some states say you can't have any pets, things like that. So those are kind of usually the deal breakers for some states and some bakers. Uh, some states are gonna be looking at your water source. So private wells, things like that might not fly. You might need the city water things, you know. So some rural homes might be restricted. They're gonna be looking at the services that you plan to offer. It varies of course, but a number of states do not allow catering, which I know a lot of people do catering and selling to retailers, right? So wholesale, having other people, basically other people selling your stuff is a no-go for cottage business. Usually, not always, usually. And sometimes there'll be multiple permits that you can get to where you can, uh, if you apply for that special permit, you can sell to retail as a cottage. I know that uh, is accessible in the state of California, but that's not going to be everywhere. They're going to be listing off the permits required, which is great because a lot of people have a question of what do I need? They'll tell you and I'll give you uh, a resource that you can go to. And of course that blog post that I mentioned will have this information for you to click over and find out. This could be um, a uh, training requirement, which is usually a food safety course. Servesafe.com is a good place to get one. Sometimes you can do it at your local um, sometimes local courthouses have sign signups for that. Local ag departments have signups for that. Sometimes it's free, sometimes it costs money, <clears throat> but that's one thing that is often required. And then local permitting. So are they inspecting your kitchen? Do you need to go get a state sales license? You know, what are the little nitty gritties just to get signed up so everyone knows that you have a business? Um, they're also, some of the more strict Strict states require laboratory testing, which is eh, not great, <laughs> but they do require laboratory testing on certain products that you want to sell, which can take a lot of time and money. So just keep that in mind. Uh, they'll often also be asking you to label your products correctly with certain statements that state that this was made in a home kitchen. Um, often you'll also need your permit number, your address, and things like that. So if that makes you feel uncomfortable, 
definitely check on your state because that likely you're going to need that on your products. And then lastly, there's also employee, seems to be a common trend of employee restrictions for cottage businesses. And it's looking like about one or two employees are allowed in a lot of states. Um, again, I have feelings about this because I feel like if you want to work from home, you shouldn't be capped on employees and um, how much money you can make. Uh, so that's just how it is. And you can see from the list that states are passing laws to protect consumers, right? They're trying to, you have to imagine this, this inside people's living spaces. So they're trying to make sure customers aren't going to get sick and that they're given a good quality product based on these requirements. But my personal opinion is that they also seem to be passing laws that keep home businesses smaller for, I don't know, there are probably many reasons for that, but there are laws that are going to keep you smaller. So just know that's kind of the arena that you're going to be working in with laws if you're going to be a cottage business. So if that works for you, great. It works for a lot of bakers. And I will say it comes with lower bills. Um, I'm not going to say it's less stressful because it's in your home, but there is less stress because there's not another location that you're worrying about. So that it working from home does work for a ton of people. And that's what you're going to be working with is your state cottage laws. You can check them out online, like I mentioned. Um, you can probably also call your local, you know, group that you've been looking at to help you with your business. It's going to be different everywhere, usually health department, ag department, one of those two, um, to give you the lowdown on your local laws. Um, the link that I wanted to give you was forager.com, F-O-R-R-A-G-E-R.com. I'm not affiliated with them. I don't know them, but I... I think their website is pretty good and they seem to keep it updated state by state along with law information, which is good to know just if you want to be in the know about the different laws in your area. Uh, with all the info I talked about, they'll have it uh, linked up for you so you can look into it. Uh, I mentioned there's also that full blog on my website. You can just, it's got that on there, that link. Um, it's got other Q and A's and FAQs that I get a lot about cottage law. So I've put that all in there for you too. Just put in blog posts into the comments and I'll send it over to you. Or you can check the website. It's in the blog um, article area. You can search for maybe cottage laws and it, it should pop up. Okay, let me read these real quick here. Cindy, one of my bestie Cindy's here. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Kelsey. Okay, yeah, I'll get that to you. Okay, it says South Carolina just amended our cottage food laws to allow us more opportunity in our business. That's great. And a lot of that's honestly, um, if, if anything, they're getting more inclusive rather than less inclusive. So cats, right. Uh, over time they've been getting, people have been pushing to open them. So that's good news. Uh, it's expensive. We're allowed to use recipes that have already been tested. Yeah. Okay. So she's dealing with the tested recipes. Hey, Sarah. Okay. Um, so that's the cottage information. Send me private DM if you have other questions. Post here or in the group if you have questions about that. We can chat about it. But theforager.com is a great resource. That's what I'm going to be looking at when you're asking me questions. So really, you know, if you need help understanding them, I can help. But if you just need lists of what's going on, just go to that site. It's super easy to find that. Okay. Now, if you wanted to go bigger, some people do. If you want to go bigger, you might, you, you will be considering commercial baking. So <clears throat> baking from home. That's not, you know, you won't be worrying about the cottage laws. You're going to be doing your commercial setup. Now, as far as laws for commercial go, you'll likely be held to a higher standard. It's more of like a li longer list situation and you're going to be inspected more often. So a lot of times with cottage business, it's like one time or maybe once a year or something similar to that. Commercial baking, you can be inspected essentially limitless times. And, um, a lot of times, depending on your local health inspector's vibe, <laughs> will kind of determine how this goes, which is a little bit scary, but they kind of hold all the power. Um, so be nice to them. Um, make sure that, that you're not wasting their time. Make sure that you're listening to them because they have a lot to do. And some of them, um, they really just need to run through like a ton of businesses in a day. So just try to, if you can make it, um, I'm not saying to like bribe them or anything, but you know, like they might eat a cupcake <laughs> or something when they arrive. You just want to get on their, um, 
their good list because these can be, because inspections are stressful. They're just stressful for everybody except the inspector, basically, <laughs> um, including employees. So, you know, just try to make it as, as comfortable as possible while they're there. Um, thankfully, they have these, usually have these checklists available all the time. So you can get a hold of those. You can know what you need to complete on a daily basis to stay up to date with their health code and what it is they want the space to look like and be like to be safe for consumers. Because you want to be in good standing with the state all the time. And I think in some states, your health inspection numbers are public. So if you had a commercial space and you got a bad health inspection score, everyone would know. Okay, so we gotta be, we gotta keep those good. Um, what's interesting about it, right, is that it's kind of, when you go commercial, it's just more involved. So this, um, as far as keeping into health code, there's I'm sure an extensive list and it's gonna change location by location, county by county. There are, um, there's gonna be special equipment and systems on site that you're going to need. So this is a whole other beast, right? We're talking, um, a specific type of sink system that has sterilization built into it, um, or not sterile, well, you know, like the three sink system to where you're washing, you're rinsing, and you're san sanitizing, not sterilizing, sanitizing system. You're going to have a labeling and dating pro procedure set up. That's a whole thing in itself. You're going to need special sort storage systems that are set up correctly, link, uh, height from the floor, certain distances away from things. You're going to need likely a grease trap if you deal with a lot of buttercream. And in that case, that has to be serviced, that has to be checked. They might be checking your ventilation based on where your building is and how it's set up. You probably have specific temp systems in all of your cooling areas that need to be checked and updated. You'll likely need to replace or have the correct flooring in certain areas for health code. So you don't want carpet in the kitchen area, right? Stuff like that. And many other additions. These are just the ones that I know that have been talked about when I've been working in the endless bakeries that I've worked in and seeing health inspectors have conversations about what needs to change. So there's quite a bit, but thankfully they should be able to provide you a checklist so you know exactly what's going to happen or what they're looking for so you can plan ahead. So it shouldn't be a surprise, but it is kind of a lot. So you just, you, you know, you need to stay on top of it. You will likely be working with a local health inspector, as I mentioned, who's also working with all of the other restaurants in the area, all the other food businesses in the area. So they have a lot to do. And the interesting thing about them is that they can show up unannounced anytime. They don't have to tell you when they're going to show up. And I'll give you a tip that they love to be there before you open. So a lot of times you'll come into work and they will be standing there and the door is still locked. No one's inside. So they're going to be able to see what it looks like when you left. So when you leave, make sure it's ready to go for the next day all the way, if you can, <laughs> so that if that does happen, that you're prepared. Okay. Um, and again, they're all doing their things their own way. I, I don't know the inner workings of a health inspector's mind. So you just need to get to know the one you're working with. Try to help them be friendly and try to get a good relationship going so that um, it's not as hectic and friction as you move through your business. So the positives, it might sound like a lot, which it is, but the positives to having the commercial space means that you can move above some of the aspects of the cottage laws. So if you noticed, I kind I didn't talk about a lot of the nitty gritty little things that were sort of seemed a little more invasive, like you'll be able to cater, right? Um, you can sell retail, you can wholesale, all that stuff that you might already th be thinking you want to do. You can make those restricted foods normally that cottage bakers cannot if you have the right storage systems and sell, uh, sales systems like cooled areas where they sit. Um, if everything's gravy inside the commercial space, you can sell that. Um, and you'll also remove the employee cap and the income ceiling, the income cap that were listed that I mentioned was probably in some of your cottage laws. So it just sort of opens up what it is that you can do, but there's more work on the back end to get you to that, that um, spot to do so. So although commercial baking is not for everyone, it really isn't. It's stressful, it's expensive, 
um, hi just hiring, having a crew is stressful, uh, dealing with the local, the other businesses around you, parking situations, that building, all the other utility bills. There's just, it's just like having a whole other life basically. So if that's what you want, I suggest go for it. If that scares you, if it feels like way too much, <clears throat> it probably is. Um, so it's not for everybody. Uh, but it is sometimes the solution for someone outgrowing their home bakery, because we all know if you, <laughs> if you've been feeling like you're outgrowing your home, it's because you're taking it over and no one can get anything done in your house because you're just, I'm kind of at that point, but I don't have any options right now. Um, so if you're growing, outgrowing your home bakery or looking to scale quickly into retail or catering, commercial baking is where you probably need to go. So again, if you want to discuss your journey into commercial, I would suggest scheduling a private call with me to strategize it because it can be str a stressful road to do on your own and without any insight. Those two things coupled together can sometimes mean that you don't actually get what you want because you didn't know what was going on and you were doing it by yourself or with people who didn't also didn't know what was going on. And it can be painful to get through that. So I'm here to do mentorship for those moving to or moving from cottage to commercial or straight to commercial. We can talk about that and get some of your uh, some of your questions answered now before you spend a bunch of money on the process. Okay. Um, okay, so she wants to use a commissary kitchen. That's a whole other topic. Uh, we can talk about that sometime. Um, Cinnabon, yes. I'm going to have to, I'm running out of time. So I'm going to read all these a little bit later. I really appreciate you guys putting in comments. Okay. Um, let me just get through the end of this because my cat is screaming in the other room <laughs> to get out. <laughs> uh, so that's really bothering me. Anyway, um, that's it for me today. And if you have additional questions uh, about legal the legality of cottage or commercial baking, post below, post in the group, DM me. We can chat about it. I'm here to help. If you're looking to revamp pricing for the year for a year of profitability in 2023, I mentioned there was a bonus. I need to mention it today because there's only three days left to take advantage of it. And I likely won't do this again for the year because this is kind of the new year um, option. So what we're doing is we're doing half off the pricing for profit course, online course, lifetime accessibility, charts, videos, all the information you need about pricing and how to do it in a way that's safe and profitable, right? It's a full-on five-part five part formula. You can make it work for you. It just basically lays out the bones of pricing, what it's all about, how it works, and how you can make it work for you so that you can be profitable yourself with your business. So yes, half off, and it comes with a bonus inside of the course where you can get another code to get some free mentorship inside the elite program that we have with all of our coaches and um, the group mentorship vault library, everything we have in there to basically pump you up even further, that there's some free time included too. So it's kind of a get you going for the 2023 year um, option bonus for you to use. You'll use code PRICE2023 on our Teachable site for that offer. And I can DM you, DM you the link to check out the course first. I can even send you that little code so that you can just put it straight in there if you want to use the course. Or it's on the website. If you look at courses, you can click on it and you'll see it. It's the pricing for profit one that we're doing the, um, the bonus for, for 2023. Okay, that's it for me today. Thanks for hanging out. You know, I always love to see you here live, but remember, hashtag replays, okay too. I get it. 9 to 10 a.m. on Thursdays is not the best for everyone. It just works for me. <laughs> so that's why I'm here. Um, I'm always, I just want to make sure this is easier for you. And I want to make sure that you feel like there's someone out there that's kind of like rooting for you in your corner and is there to help you when the chips are down. That's what I'm here for. Okay. So I'll see you guys later and I hope you have a great day. Um, see you next week. And there is a, um, a bite-sized workshop coming up on the 9th, which will be next Monday. And it's all about getting off the fence. So if you are, um, if you're the type of person that wants to start your cottage or commercial business, but you're not sure yet, getting off the fence is a really good 
fun little workshop. You can come uh, hang out live or I can send the replay to you. We'll cover three frequently asked questions about starting baking business, give you some insider information, get your questions answered so that you can then make the decision that's best for you with all the knowledge that you'll need to feel comfortable with that decision. Okay. Just let me know if you need the info for that too. It's on the website as well. Okay. All right. See you guys later. Bye.